Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, as you can see by the title, we are doing another cooking video on my Lenordica Rosa Elwood cook stove. I really hope you guys are enjoying these videos. I think this is like my third or fourth one that I have posted and I am so excited because I love, love filming these for you guys. I also cook on this every single day. So I have lots and lots of meals that I can do for videos. So I just love sharing it with you guys. Also, there are a lot of people out there who are interested in uh, my stove, wood stoves in general. Um, and so I love watching people cook on them. I think it's fascinating. And so I love to share it. I know there are some of you who are not interested in these videos and so that is totally okay. But for those of you that are interested in them and think they're just fun, I am moving my channel in a homesteading direction. So this is definitely part of it and part of my everyday life now. So that's why I'm sharing it. Also, it is currently pantry challenge. I mentioned in a previous video that Last year after my garden, I pressure canned all of my garden food. I froze some things, but mostly I put everything on the shelf in shelf stable jars and pressure canned it. So it is pantry challenge season right now. It's a big thing that homesteaders do on Instagram and on YouTube here. Um, lots of homesteaders do it. And it's basically where you spend the whole month of January or you can go into February, but as long as you can, basically, you do not go to the grocery store, you eat what you have and eat what you harvested from your garden from the year before. So that is what we are doing. So for today, we are making braised short ribs. Now I don't actually have short ribs. Again, part of pantry challenge, you use what you have. And so I actually have pork ribs, but I've been seeing people cook braised short ribs for years. I've always seen them and it always looks so complicated, but I was like, you know what? I've got some red wine left over from last year. Um, I have some pork ribs in my freezer and I also have some beef stock that I pressure canned last year after garden season. And so I was like, I have got all the stuff to make this. So we're gonna make some braised short ribs today, AKA braised pork ribs because I don't have short ribs. So I'm really excited and I hope you guys enjoy this video. So I'm gonna go over everything that you need. You definitely need a Dutch oven. This is actually my smallest Dutch oven that I have. And I know you're like, it's a pumpkin. I know it's so cute. My sister actually bought this for me a couple years ago and I've <laughs> never used it. I've never used it. I have a much larger uh, Dutch oven and um, I always use that one. This one is small enough. It's my smallest one. It'll fit in my wood stove, which is perfect. You need oil. You need a red wine. It can be a cheap one. Um, this was a gift from my neighbor last year. It's just a red Cabernet. These are my side items, but I'm doing green beans, potatoes, which is traditionally to be served with, with the ribs. And then I am doing carrots for the stock, which these are already pressure cooked, but I'm gonna put them in anyway for the flavoring for the sauce, the braised rib sauce. I have a beef broth here, which you need to cover the ribs with. If this isn't enough, I have some more, but I'm just gonna start with one jar. But look at that delicious beef broth that I pressure canned last year. I'm just, I'm so excited to use this, honestly, because there's so much good flavor already in this. This isn't just beef broth. This is actually from a huge thing of beef stew that I made, and I have a bunch of these, and it's just so good. You can see that fat layer on there. It's delicious. This has garlic and rosemary and so many good things already in there, so yeah. I'm excited about that. That's gonna be super flavorful because typically to make that um, braised beef sauce, you need an onion, which yes, you gotta have an onion. You need carrots and celery to like put in there, make you the base for your sauce, you know, kind of like to make that broth, which this is gonna already be so flavorful. I'm not even worried, but so I'm gonna use celery flakes because I don't, it's dried celery basically because I don't have any celery, but that's gonna be fine. I'm doing thyme and rosemary as my herbs. You can just do rosemary, you can leave out the thyme, you can do whatever you want, I guess. And then I'm doing pork perfect rub for my rib rub. Um, and then I'm gonna do onion powder and garlic powder on them as well, um, because I just, these are just my two staples in life. I love them. So yeah, we are about to get started. First thing we gotta do is season these ribs and then we have to sear them in the bottom of the crock. So we're gonna do that first. All right, I'm wearing gloves to protect my nails, but you don't have to. Um, I'm about to chop this onion and then we're going to season that pork and get it uh, seared. And once we sear that meat, we set it aside and we're gonna saute this onion. So that'll be really good. This isn't a large onion. I'm only making enough for Patrick and I. Um, so it doesn't have to be anything crazy here. Also, if you hear my baby, he's in his swing behind me. <laughs> We're alone today, so I'm trying to do this while daddy's at work. So it can be done by the time daddy gets home. Isn't that right, baby? Yes, you're doing so good today. So you 
can see, these aren't short ribs, but they're incredibly large, like, and they're bone. This is bone, they're bone in, so I think they're gonna cook up perfectly. They're also not super heavy fat. I don't know, I'm just really excited to do this recipe. I've wanted to do it so long, because that's huge, look at that. Uh, I got the Pork Perfect pork rub. I, I also really love um, the pork butt rub. Um, forget the brand name. It's called Butt Rub, and that's actually my favorite, but we're out, so. Honestly, this rub is so good. I, you kind of can't do too much. It's going to cook down in that broth anyway, or in the sauce. Well, broth, and then it turns into a thick kind of, almost like a gravy braised rib sauce, and it just looks so good, so you really can't screw it up. So the onion and the pork is done, and now we are going to sear these in the living room, so I'll take you in there. All right, so I have my pot hot. My pot is hot, my Dutch oven. I've got my oil in here, and I can see that it's hot just by moving it. This oil is super, super hot, so I'm gonna move it over here actually to kind of cool it just a little bit. And then I am going to put my ribs in here to sear them. So I'm hoping you guys can see that a little bit. Oh yeah. Yes, yes. All right, I want you to see how beautifully this is searing. So you sear it, you don't cook it through, you just simply sear it, look at that. And you're gonna do it on all four sides. So you just give it a few minutes, like a minute on each side I would do, because this is really hot. And then this is turning out so beautiful. I'm really proud of myself actually. Oh, it looks so, so, so good. So good. We're going to do this to all four ribs. Okay, next, we're going to add in the onion right into that oil and seasoning mixture. Then we're going to add in my jar of carrots. And then I'm going to add in the celery plate. And then we're gonna stir it a little bit. You're being such a good baby. You can already see the brown bits coming off that bottom. And when I add in that broth, it's gonna completely melt away. Yes, you're being so good. But we are gonna add my beef broth now. I canned this 923, so like four months ago or so. When you hear that pop, you know you canned it well. It smells absolutely unbelievable. So we're gonna dump this straight in here. And that fat plug, we're gonna dump that in there as well. Delicious, absolutely delicious. All right guys, this has been bubbling for a second. So I'm going to go on and add my herbs. Some fresh rosemary here, I'm dropping it straight in, no worries. And then I have uh, dried thyme. So I'm doing dried thyme and rosemary. Like I said, you can do whatever. And then I am adding in the rest of my bottle of wine here. Um, I would say there's at least a cup and a half in here um, and probably not much more than that. Again, I'm using a, a Harry and David's Cabernet Sauvignon. This is a red wine that I've had since last year and it just needs to be finished off. And I'm adding all of it, just like so. All right guys, so this is what it's looking like at the moment. I haven't stirred it yet, but I'm about to. It smells unbelievable. This is what's gonna make that thick stock gravy at the end of the recipe that you pour over top of the ribs. Don't worry about all the bits and you know, this looks like a mess, right? Like you're like, who wants to eat twigs of rosemary? No, you strain this in the end and then you pour it over the ribs and after it bakes in the oven, it's gonna be amazing. At least I hope, I've never had it, but we're experimenting today, guys. My oven's at 450 and I wanna keep it there. So I'm gonna, talk, I'm gonna toss the log in. Oh yes, it's boiling. Well, I guess you couldn't see. It's boiling beautifully. All right, here are my seared pork ribs. And I'm gonna put all four of them in here. And they do have to be covered with the broth. So it should cover nicely once they're all in here. And I do think they will all fit because there is so many juices in here. It looks so good. Oh, look at that. Oh my gosh. Oh, it smells divine. That wine. I can smell the wine. Oh, I'm just so happy. I'm just so happy. Okay. All right. We are going to put this in the oven on top of the pan. I've already got my pan in here. And here we are. I'm going to sit it on my roasting oven 
I'm sitting it on my roasting pan just as like an added layer of protection for my Dutch oven and my stove. And then we're gonna slide it in there. And it's gonna cook for two hours until those ribs are tender and that stock thickens up really, really nicely. All right, guys, the last thing we gotta do is pop all of these lids on the sides. You're not supposed to store your canning jars with the rings on, but I do. Um, I just check my seals before I pop them. They're all perfect. And then you'll also hear it. It's perfect, perfect green beans. And then I'm doing, um, and then these I'm gonna drain and then I'm gonna put them in a pan and I'm going to season them and then I'm going to put butter and seasonings and garlic and I'm gonna make mashed potatoes with these. Sometimes I roast them in the oven with seasonings, but this dish calls for some mashed potatoes. And we are getting through the pantry challenge so great. Perfect. All right, guys, my baby's asleep, so I'm doing this oh so quietly. Um, the ribs are still in the oven. Um, I've let the fire die down a little bit. It's got my oven at 350 exactly, which is perfect. And right now I'm about to get these potatoes heated. I've got some pepper, salt, butter, some Irish butter, and garlic powder, onion powder, and a little bit of milk because I'm going to heat this and get it boiling, and then I'm going to um, make this a creamy mashed potatoes. And then these are just green beans, and they're just heating, and then I add pepper at the end. All right, so it's been two hours, so I'm going to check the ribs and see how tender they are. If they're not falling off the bone, they're not done. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness, yes, look. You see how this is just disintegrating? That is what you wanna see. They are done. So perfect, oh my gosh, it smells so good. Ribs out of here, very carefully, because they are falling apart. Oh my gosh, it looks so good. Because we are gonna strain this broth. So I'm gonna put my ribs into here very delicately because they are falling apart. Ooh, it's gonna be hard to get them. All right, so I have my ribs out and now we're gonna strain this and then I'm going to uh, separate the broth from the veggies and then I'm going to reduce the broth a little bit to make a thicker gravy. Okay, so you're gonna wanna use a sieve and a big bowl and press your veggies down to get all the juices out. You can eat this if you want to. Um, it does have big chunks of herbs in it, but it's gonna be super concentrated. So. All right guys, we are almost there. We've got our ribs here. They're still extremely hot. They're just waiting for the gravy to be done. And then I have some creamed, these are creamed garlic butter mashed potatoes. However, they're purple. So I grew these potatoes and they're purple potatoes. That's why they're not white. <laughs> these are never gonna be white because they're purple potatoes. So they look like a really light lavender purple, um, but we're almost done. All right, I have reduced this quite a bit. You can see the line right here that line is where my gravy was and I've reduced it down quite a bit. It's actually thickened up really nicely. You can see how thick it's getting. So now I'm going to add a little bit of butter. Um, I'm going to add some of this Escherie French unsalted butter. They do make a salted version, but this is so salty already. I'm just going to add the unsalted. This is a really delicious butter that I got. It's a French butter and I got it from Marquis. They're based in Miami and I think New York as well. Um, you can buy it on their website, but I got this uh, for the new year and it's just so good. I've been using it to eat raw and cook with. This is just such a delicious butter. Um, I have not seen it found anywhere other than Marquis. Um, so that's where I got it. I'm just gonna put a, a cube about like that in there just to make this really kind of buttery. And I saw someone on TikTok do this, honestly, and it just looked like it dissolved into that gravy and thickened in there so beautifully. And then the next step after this little bit of butter, we are gonna put our ribs back in here and we're gonna baste our ribs with this thickened gravy. Like, look how thick that has gotten. This is what you wanna see, but you wanna be careful not to burn it. See how thick that is? Oh, it's beautiful. All right, so we got our uh, butter in there. Now we're gonna put our ribs in there and we are going to toss it in there and then we're going to plate it up. And then we're done. All right, guys, we are gonna plate this up. I'm using my homegrown purple potatoes and I did cream these. They're incredibly creamy and they're very, very hot. And they are just garlic butter creamed purple potatoes. So, 
I'm gonna put some of those down. Okay, so there's that, our delicious ribs here. So I'm gonna plate it just like I see everyone on the videos plate it, just like this. Some of my homegrown green beans from the garden from last year. For a nice little vegetable side. Last but not least, I had some garnish. I had some fresh chives and some fresh rosemary, so I'm just gonna do that for fun because I've seen people do this and it always looks so yummy. Some fresh chives and I'm gonna do this for fun, a sprig of rosemary. I'm gonna drizzle a touch of that gravy on there too. It's so thick, it looks so good, oh my goodness delicious so yes so yes that is my finished product with my purple potatoes from the garden and my green beans from the garden i already tasted this and it tastes absolutely amazing so i'm really excited for patrick to try it i think he's really gonna love it so yeah that is my beef braised ribs in a red wine sauce but with pork <laughs> all right guys that is it for this video i hope you guys enjoyed watching me cook these ribs they were absolutely amazing. I can tell you we have already eaten them and they were absolutely delicious. I definitely will be making this again. If you guys want to see more videos like this or anything else here on the property, feel free to leave it in the comments down below. I hope you guys enjoyed watching me cook on my wood cook stove. Thank you so much. I will see you guys next time. Be kind. Bye.